Hello there YouTube. In this video um, I'm going to be discussing bushcraft axes and what makes a good bushcraft axe, what are the options available at a variety of price points, different designs, different makers, um, etc. Now there's definitely bushcraft axe is a very broad term, it means different things to different people and there are probably more opinions out there than even options as to what is a good bushcraft axe, etc, etc. So stick around um, through this video. I'll discuss initially a few specifications, some designs, some options. Um, I'll go and do some testing so you'll see how they function in what I would call typical bushcraft scenarios. And if you stick around to the end, we can have some conclusions on potential recommendations, um, how they performed in the various tests and you know what, what options you could then think of for making a choice of a bushcraft axe. So I'll start off by you know looking at the Grand Source Brooks small forest axe. Um, now it's quite a contentious there's people who absolutely love this axe and there are people who absolutely hate it. But I think the reality is this has become pretty much almost the norm for what people first think of now. As a bushcraft axe. Um, very much popularized by Ray Mears um, probably 20 years ago and I think you know shortly after that bushcraft as a sort of hobby or activity really took off and um, you know he was definitely promoting this as a good size and good option and certainly I think Gronsfors Brooks did very well out of that but it became quite a common sort of model and size that everybody typically associated with bushcraft. So I will start off with Alex. Um, and as I say, it was, well, it is very commonly seen in a lot of recommendations as a bushcraft axe and for, for some good reason. Um, but then also the detractors for also good reason don't like this particular, well, shape really in size, but also sometimes the maker. So why would he have originally recommended this? Now, I think the first thing to think about when you are looking at an axe is what are you actually going to do with the axe? Bushcraft can mean different things to different people. Um, some people really do more camping, outdoor, um, hobby, lifestyle. Um, you know, there's a variety of different reasons or things that you might term as bushcraft. Um, but if you, you know, if you are out there, it's a hobby, um, you just want to get something good that will work for you for the various tasks you're going to do, then, you know, stick around and we'll, we'll have a discussion of a few options. I've got a few different types, you know, I've got the small forest axe from Grand Falls Brux, which is a typically a Swedish design. Um, got a similar dimensioned axe, um, really made in Ukraine um, and slightly different shape and design probably more of a Russian shape, if you want to call it, something like that. Um, I've got a more typical German shaped axe. And as I say, we'll go through these in more detail, but these just to give you a taste of what we're going to talk about. I've also got a Basque style axe. And then there's a couple of other options on lengths, Husqvarna, Rinaldi, and a Robin Wood carving axe. So depending on your tasks, we can look at maybe other alternatives you might want to consider. So I'm going to start this discussion by saying a typical bushcrafter could be or probably is somebody who, as I say, is a hobby. And then, you know, are you going to be processing big, large timbers? I'm going to say probably not. You may not have access to your own woodland, so you're relying on using someone else's space or visiting public areas. Um, it's unlikely going to be allowed to cut down a lot of trees. So you're going to be processing the wood that's available, probably going to be quite small, um, small diameter, often dry wood if you're going to use it for firewood, or if you're using green wood, it's going to be shelter building, tent pegs, and maybe some spoon carving. So very much depends on the activity. Now, if you're looking at one axe, which is typically what they do for bushcraft, um, that's another, another key point. Because there's no one axe that is perfect for all activities. It just doesn't. It doesn't exist. Um, so, if you are looking at one, it's going to be a compromise, and that compromise 
is up to you and how you want to use it. So I know some of the, the, the guys who use axes for their work and process a lot of wood, they're very dismissive of this axe because of the handle length. Um, now, that's a valid point. You can't process a lot of wood. Also, having a shorter handle length does also have safety implications. So on the safety side, if you have a short handle, you know, the, the blade is closer to your body. So if you're swinging, trying to fell wood or chopping, you know, your arc is much closer. And if you're standing up, that arc will swing down. If you miss what you're chopping and will hit your leg or your thigh, and that can be highly dangerous because, you know, you'll need a sharp ax. And if it's very sharp, it could be very dangerous. So certainly the people who don't like this size, a lot of it's around safety. There are ways around that. I mean, mostly they recommend using, if you're using that kind of, or doing that sort of task, um, you, you should be kneeling, because if you're kneeling, you're closer to the ground, the swing will end up in the ground or the, the log you're using as a, as a stop. Um, so there are ways around it. But I think the discussion really is on something this size is, you know, it could be portability. So if you are someone who wants to carry your axe in your rucksack, um, particularly if you want to keep it concealed because you might be walking through public areas where you don't want to be seen carrying an axe. You know, those are the sorts of thought processes you probably want to consider when you're thinking about what size axe and what type of axe do I want. So the reason I think this one was a valid choice and probably still could be a valid choice um, is because of the size. Um, you know, it's not a massive axe. You can put it in a rucksack fairly easily um, and it's not too heavy. Um, so as I said, starting with this conversation, it's really critical you think about what you're actually going to be doing. So if you're going to be doing a variety of um, typical bushcraft activities, you're going to pitch up at a campsite, maybe fell a very small tree for a shelter, split some small diamonds of kindling for your fire, and maybe do a bit of spoon carving on some green wood, which is a fairly common variety of things you could be doing for as part of your hobby or for fun. You know, this is still probably worth a viable sort of size to be thinking about. As I said, you will need to be very careful about the safety element, but you know, that is, you can overcome that. If you're someone who is very much more focused on the, the carving side, you know, your, your main hobby, you really want to just use your axe for, carving out spoon blanks or carving some ten pegs, really you can get away with a much smaller candle, um, even down to a carving um, axe. So, you know, you may want to decide that actually portability and carving functions are more important. You might go down that route. But if you then someone who actually is processing slightly bigger trees um, and, you know, doing a lot more processing of wood, you may want to think, you know, maybe portability is less important and you go for something slightly bigger. So, as I say, task, defining your tasks is key to making the decision. But I'm going to start by, you know, assuming you have thought about the small forest axe. It is commonly recommended. Um, so if we look at that sort of size in the first instance, you know, what options are out there? And, you know, what are the price points as well? Because the other critical thing, if you're starting out, have you got a lot of money you can afford to spend on, you know, an expensive axe? Or do you want to spend a lot less and not, you know, risk making a poor decision? And some of that also, some of that decision will also rest on how comfortable you are doing some of the work yourself. Because the high quality axes tend to require less work doing to them. Whereas the cheaper ones might need a bit more sharpening or shaping or even an axe cover making. So these are all the decisions you're going to have to think about before you, you buy the axe. So if we start off by looking at some of the specifications, so I'm going to call this uh, a typical Swedish design. And it is made by a Swedish company, Gransfors Brux. Um, it's got a relatively short handle. In this case, the handle is, I have measured them all, 19 inch, uh, which was 49 centimeters. Um, the total weight of the axe with this cover um, was 980 grams. Um, so it's less than a kilogram. The bit's length, which is the actual sharp end of the axe, 
Now that's another thing to consider, obviously, the amount of, with the weight, um, the arc of the swing, the shape of that bit is really how effectively, you know, all that work you're putting in is generating. Now a small head can help sometimes if it's very sticky wood, a bigger head, obviously if it's, um, depending on the profile, can be a bit more sticky, can stick in the wood a bit more. But it's less efficient with a small bit than with a bigger bit because you're taking, you know, if you're going to do lots of chops, you have to overlap. You have to make a lot more for the same amount of work with a, a broader bit. But, you know, then again, you've also got the, um, you know, how, how comfortable are you with sharpening, how much of a big dangerous bit do you want, etc, etc. As I say, there's so many compromises, um, there's never going to be a perfect option. This one, I think, you know, for carving purposes, it's quite small. You don't want something too massive. It's going to be quite good for that. It's got a bit of a beard, a um, bit of nice weight to it, um, but it's not too heavy. Um, so Swedish style, and that's the sort of head shape you're looking at now. This is the Grants Falls Brux. There are other Swedish manufacturers, um, Helt Falls. Um, they very similar axes, um, will be cheaper. And then also even Husqvarna, which um, obviously a Chainsful company, but they also subcontract um, their axe manufacturing out to one of the Swedish companies and they're even cheaper again. So you can get very similar looking axes uh, in a variety of price points. So the next one, um, so this one was made in Ukraine, got on Etsy. And it is a very different shape actually. It's got sort of the back, if you look, it sort of arches up, much broader blade. Um, this is actually quite a lot heavier. I think it's uh, just it's over a kilogram, uh, 1.2 kilograms. Very similar sized handle. I think this was just on, yeah, it's actually exactly the same. So 19 inch, you know, 48, 49 centimeters, but a lot heavier. Um, broader bits, got a bit of a beard. Also, if you're choking up for um, closer work, um, heavier handle, heavier uh, head. Um, the handle's heavier as well because the handle's a lot thicker. I mean, some of the drawbacks or well, the people don't like about the Swedish axes that have thick handles, this one actually is quite a lot thinner than that one. So for me, this definitely, even though they've unfortunately done quite a nice finish and you know, they've dyed it and it's a nice shape, it's it's just too thick. Um, this handle is, this is too wide. So if you're choking up there, you are going to get a tired hand after a while. I mean, I haven't got the biggest hands, but also I've got the smallest, and that to me is it is too big. So I'm going to have to reprofile that um, that handle to make it really more comfortable for you know even just a small amount of work. But um, very different and interesting looking. Quite a nice big palm swell on the palm at the end, which is good for gripping if you swing in a bit more. But you still got the problem with this one. It's it's short, so you have to be very careful of your safety and how you how you use it. Because um, you start swinging this too wildly, it is a risk. You, you know you're going to swing it into your body, which isn't good. So I'm going to kind of term that. And as I say, I'm not a, an expert on axe design, but um, you see this more in sort of Russian or even sometimes the Finnish style axes, where this swept back of the pole swept in, broader bit, sweeps up a little bit, um, a little bit more of a sort of Russian or Finnish design. This next one is made by Still, um, it's also a chainsaw company, and they subcontract out the manufacturer of this head. Um, it actually says on the sticker, uh, this has not been modified yet, it says made in Italy. I believe these are made by Rinaldi, could be wrong. Um, but either way, um, it's got a varnished handle, also massively thick. I mean, it's, it's crazy how thick this handle is. Now, I'm surprised by that actually because these are quite cheap. Um, it's the cheapest option I've got here. We'll go through that later. But um, really, I think it's mostly going to be, well, they sell it to professional forestry um, workers. So these are guys who probably just want a quick axe to do a bit of short limbing or whatever. Um, and they the more discerning people when it comes to handle thickness. I am quite surprised that still has gone for such a thick handle on such a small um, axe because it doesn't need the strength elements or really, I'm not sure why, it's, it's, it's quite uncomfortable. So it seems to be quite a nice piece of wood, but I definitely will 
reshape that handle to make it more comfortable. This is a shorter handle. Um, this has got a 600 gram head. I think the total for this one was um, 875 grams, um, but with the handle thinned out, it's going to be lighter. Um, the bit was 10 centimeters, so that one was also 10 centimeters, so a longer bit um, than the small forest axe, which was only eight, so quite a small bit. This one, because of the flare, it does take it up to um, 10 centimeters as well. Now this is probably what I'm going to say, a German style pattern. They sort of have a longish straight pole which then sweeps out into the bit on both sides. Um, so quite a nice little shape, does sort of provide a bit of a beard. Um, and you know, it gives you quite a good cutting edge for the relative to the weight, um, quite a light head. This one, very cheap, doesn't come with any kind of protective cover. Um, does have a little rubber blade cover, which is very good initially, just to stop you cutting yourself. But um, anyway, that's the design for now. We'll come back to that. This next one, people who like axes and know about axes are aware of this style. Um, but it's quite an uncommon axe. You, know, you can't just go to your hardware shop and buy this because it's actually it's a Basque axe. Um, it's quite a specific design. Contrary to most of these axes, which actually have an uh, axe handle or half fitted in from the bottom and then wedged, this one actually is a slip fit, so it slides in from the top um, and it it's thicker on the top, so that's what holds it in. They pressure, use a hydraulic press to fit these in. But it does mean that from the start, they actually have quite a thin profile. This one's extremely thin, very flat. Um, so it's all about being able to grip it. Now this is the, one of the smallest, if not the smallest they make, they might make a 600 gram head, but typically they use, the ones you see a lot of are the bigger sort of over a kilogram head with a longer handle. And these were developed in the Basque country um, and they're very specific to the area they worked in. Um, it's actually got a beach handle, which is unusual as well. A lot of handles are hickory or um, ash. Um, this is beech, but they actually were developed for cutting beech wood. And they have some of the earliest um, traditions of like a timber sport culture in the Basque country. And, you know, the, the, it was quite a, it, it developed almost in isolation, which is why they're all quite different. They look different. Um, and, you know, something else about the design of the sacks. Most of these, uh, either drop forged or hand forged, they take a billet of metal and drift put a drift through to make the hole for the handle and then they flatten the blades out. This one actually is more of a, a laminate, so they actually take a piece of steel, they wrap it round, and then they sandwich a, um, a harder steel in the middle and that forms the blade. So they actually forge well together, the iron and the steel, and then that's how they start the forging process. So it's actually made in a different way. But why these are harder to get, um, is that I guess over time, as in most traditional um, cultures, there's been less and less of a need to, I guess, do all their firewood processing, whatever, by hand. And over time, the smiths have just stopped making these axes. And now, as far as I understand, and it's what's out there, the information out there, is actually made by one guy. So there's the last remaining smith who does this in the traditional manner. And um, it's made in Ernietta. I don't know how you say it properly, but that's what's on the blade. But that's actually the, the, the regional town they come from. And, but Juaregi, Juaregi, um, I think Jose Ramon Juaregi, he's the guy who makes these. So he makes the the head. I think the handle's made by someone else. And then there's a leather sheath, which I think also would not be made by the smith. But the blacksmith himself, you know, it seems to be there's only one guy who's making these. So... They're not that commonly available. Um, they're not crazily expensive, but they're just not that available. They were very much designed um, as a functional tool. Um, so they are actually quite a good option. Um, unusual, as I say, to see it in this, this short length. Most of the ones I've seen uh, on YouTube and for sale have been the bigger ones, which they use for processing a lot of wood. So these guys really developed these axes to process wood all the time. It, was, it wasn't a a recreation or a hobby for them. This was their life. Um, so hence, I think the big axes were much more prolific. 
probably, I'm not, I could be wrong, but they might have developed these smaller ones for the bushcraft community, but um, probably these are kindling or um, processing all this small stuff. But uh, interesting design, and um, we'll get it back onto that one. So, you know, those are the sort of four different shapes I think you can look at. You've got the Basque and the German style, um, the Russian style, and the Swedish style. So different head shapes, um, and you know, will will they do all the activities you need for for bushcraft? Yeah, definitely they will. I uh, we'll we'll test them. We'll see how they perform, and if there's any significant differences, we will we'll find out. We will start off with the Grossfels Brux small forest axe, dry wood, um, and we'll do some splitting first on the a small size that you'd probably commonly cut in your camp, and then on slightly bigger. See how it gets on. So small forest axe, Grossfels Brux. the bigger diameter no problem splitting so the next one is the khaki forge the ukrainian russian style x Give it a go. No problem. So the Russian Cocky Forge axe. Alright, so this is the Basque Axe, 800 gram. Here's the still forestry hatchet, 600 gram head. Have put a bit of an edge on it because it came quite dull. Still forestry hatchet. Alright, Husqvarna forest jacks. Longer handles, so I'm standing up. No problem. This is the Rinaldi. Um, I think it's 700 gram head. Longer handle. More of a cutter than a splitter. Alright, finally, the little carving hatchet. Not really designed for this, but we'll see what it can do. So, Robin Wood uh, 
carving axe. So it splits that size fairly easily. Okay, Robin Wood carving hatchet. So for this next test, it's largely green wood, so cut about a month ago. Um, so we're just going to see if we can split the green wood and then do a bit of carving on it. Grants Falls Brux. Um, this is the Khaki Forge Russian style X. So the next one is the still or steel German Salex. The Bosque X 800 gram. And lastly, we'll try the Robin Wood carving hatchet, which should be a, should be fine for this. Alrighty, so we'll take the green wood and we'll do a bit of carving, see how it carves. This is the Grand Falls Brux Small Forest Axe. So although the handle is a bit longer, it's not really getting in my way too much. Certainly removes wood pretty well. Small, um, small forest axe, Grants Falls Brux. So the next one is the Khaki Forge Russian style axe, a bit heavier, has got a beard, thicker handle, same length handle as the small forest axe. So this one, razor sharp, quite sticky, biting in quite a bit, really sticky, so it wasn't releasing very well, hence why I was having to drop, drop it down. So very sharp, biting in very well, but not as good as the small forest axe for the carving on green wood. Okay, next up is the steel 600 gram uh, forestry hatchet. Steel forest your hatchet. Put a bit of an edge on it, but I didn't want to put too much time because I wanted to show as found. Probably not sharp enough. It was definitely tending to glance out of the wood. Um, so once again, probably not as good as the small forest axe. Has got a shorter handle though, so obviously doesn't catch on your clothes or your body. So a little bit better in that sense. So that was the steel forest your hatchet. 
So next up is the Basque X, uh, the 800 gram version. We'll see how that gets on. So the Basque Axe also profiles quite narrow, very sharp, it was quite sticky in the wood as well, but it does feel good in the hand. It's quite a nice shaped handle, um, nice weight to the head and quite short so you can get in close. Felt nice, but it was a bit sticky. Okay, next up is the Robin Wood carving hatchet. So this really is the job it's designed for. So we'll see how it gets on. So no problem at all, it's got a, a wider bevel, probably the widest of all of them. Nice short handle, quite a lightweight, you can get up right up close to the head. So pretty much perfect for this sort of carving of green wood. That's what it's designed for, worked really well. All right, so next up, uh, just for fun, the Rinaldi. So got a long handle, very broad bit. So it's not really ideal for this carving, but we'll see how it gets on. It's got a very narrow um, blade as well, so very good for cutting. We'll see, probably not so good for carving. So overall, not bad actually. Um, it is. It did stick a little bit. Didn't split the uh, chips off as easily. It's fairly light, so it wasn't too bad. But it wouldn't be your first choice for carving. But um, still can do it. And last but not least, this is the Husqvarna Forest Axe, which I think is equivalent to the Grandsworth Brux Forest Axe. Um, so the longer handle, heavier head, uh, so we get on. So there we go, that one did manage to carve. It was a bit more sticky, definitely heavier in the hand. The handle is too thick really. Um, if I was gonna use this a lot, I do need to slim it down. But um, the length didn't really get in the way too much. If I was gonna do more fine carving, it probably would have an impact. But as it is, does the basics, could do a 10 pole um, or 10 peg. Um, so yeah, worked okay. but. With a thicker profile, this one's going to be much better at splitting as we saw. Um, but it, it was a bit too sticky for the carving of the green wood, but you can do it. Okay, so the next test is portability or packability. So I've chosen the LK35 Swedish Army um, surplus rucksack. And it's fairly popular in the bushcraft community. Um, relatively modest size and it has got an axe loop 
So I'll be putting the axe in the axe loop and seeing how it fits. So here's the uh, close-up of the axe loop. So it's you can put the head of the axe securely underneath the, the, the lid and then the handle hangs down. So what I'm, for portability, you're not going to want it to be hanging too far below the bottom of this rucksack. That's going to be the test. All right, so first up, we've got the small forest axe. Um, fits nicely in the loop and just comes down. It's almost like it's made for this particular axe. You can see it fits perfectly on this um, axe loop. Head is covered by the rucksack. And on your back, clearance. Small forest axe. Next up is the Kharki Forge Russian axe. Similar length, just notice the palm swell makes it slightly more awkward at the bottom, but it does fit the profile of the bag very well. It fits into the loop very well, very similar to the small forest axe. So no surprise, similar dimensions, but the Basque axe fits very well. Same similar length, fits the loop very well and it doesn't stick below the bottom of the bag. So all the axes in this size range fit very well on this type of rucksack if you're using them on the outside. Alright, next up is the steel forestry hatchet. It's not long enough to go through the bottom loop, so it's actually therefore loose. So it's not going to be good for this particular configuration going through this top loop so if this is a the type of axe you want to have you probably want to consider having it inside your bag and likewise with the carving axe if this is the size you're going for you will need to put it inside your bag so if that's going to be a problem it's something to think about but it's not going to fit very well with a secure strap on the bottom you can have other straps around that you can add on if there's mole etc but as it is this is just handle sticking out or if you don't mind sticking out the bottom that's also an option but it's something to consider so last up is the uh, Husqvarna forest axe once again sticks out quite far below the bottom of the bag the rest of it fits in fine but it's going to be the same problem as the Rinaldi it does you know, the profiles a bit too long you just sit comfortably on this rucksack the longer rucksack could be fine carrying it but using the normal axe loops it's a bit long alrighty so what conclusions can we draw from all of that so I think when people have either loved or hated this particular size or style of axe I think the reality it, it has got its place um, you do have to be more safety conscious could be aware of how you're using it but as you can see with the portability um, it sits in a pack very well it's got quite a nice lightweight, it can split um, certainly large enough timbers that you might use for just general camping. Um, it was able to do carving fairly well. So I think all in all, um, as a style of axe, the small forest axe was actually fine for general bushcraft or camping. The price wise for, the, for this axe now, um, I think I said earlier, but I paid around £45 for this, and that was 15 years ago, or a bit more. And now, nearly three times that price. So I think for that price, you can get an equivalent, also from a Swedish manufacturer like Hultafors, probably for not quite half, but a lot less, maybe £70. Um, and any Husqvarna equivalent also would be cheaper. So definitely a viable option. But I think a bit on the expensive side for what it is. What you do get, obviously, with Grand Falls Brooks, but you would get with um, Halter Falls, you're getting the leather 
X cover. It comes sharp or ready to use. And the quality control is pretty good. So it really comes down to a cost and what you're gonna use it for. Additionally, availability, the Grand Falls Brux axes are fairly available, um, certainly in Europe and America. So if you wanna just go out and buy one, it's a good option. Um, the Basque axe, very similar size, quite a different sort of shape and profile, but performed almost the same. It was a bit more sticky in the carving side, but for felling, it was slightly um, narrower bevel. So I think for if you're going to be doing more chopping tasks, that is going to be a slightly better one. This one I think is around about 90 pounds, so it is cheaper. Um, availability is tough because, as I said, it's made by one blacksmith. Um, so how available these are is a different question, but certainly a nice axe comes ready to use, razor sharp with a sheath uh, and very good quality um, and a very interesting axe as well. So definitely a viable option with, if you can get hold of one. The next one in that same size range was the Kharkiv Forge, a sort of Russian style axe from Ukraine. Um, this was heavier, razor sharp, came with a lovely, um, well thought out, well manufactured um, sheath. As I say, it was heavier, so that is a consideration if you're thinking about portability. It's a nice, interesting uh, design. It has got the, the bearded um, shape for getting up for close work, but it was very sticky. Um, split very well, it's got quite a nice profile for that. and also the weight, so it did split very well. Nice palm swell, um, but that also did hinder it slightly with the strap on the bottom of the LK35. But um, pretty much the same price range as the Small Forest Axe. Um, availability, not as available. You have to go on Etsy, and uh, there's probably a month or so wait for one of those now, I think. Whereas that one you could probably get off the shelf. Definitely also a halter fours are very readily available. So the next one up, the steel uh, forestry hatchet or axe. Um, this is the cheapest option by far, 20 pounds delivered as is. Um, it doesn't come with any kind of cover apart from this rubber blade protector. So you will need to make yourself some sort of cover. Um, it needs sharpening. It didn't come sharp out of the box. The profile is not bad, but it will need sharpening and the handle will need work as well. But um, a, a small amount of sharpening and it's usable, but you will really need to make a, an axe cover. But for 20 pounds, if you're comfortable with handwork, then that is definitely a good option. The only, it's quite, it's shorter um, than the small forest axe, the handle length. And I think it was around 40 centimeters. So it's more of a hatchet than a sort of axe. You wouldn't really want to be doing much, well, if any, felling of any sort with that. Um, and also the length made it difficult to attach the outside of your rucksack with two straps, unless you had more mole on the outside, but it would certainly go very easily inside your pack. So that would be a consideration. So I think if your tasks were small kindling, small firewood processing, and a bit of carving, it's definitely um, an option to think about. So the other, the bottom of the scale really from terms of size was the dedicated carving hatchet. This is from Robin Wood. Um, I think around 50 pound, not 100% sure. But um, it's drop forged, so it's produced on mass, I think somewhere in Europe. Um, when I got it, the handle was to thick for my liking, I did thin it out, but certainly in the testing, performed very well on processing small amounts of firewood, um, and also obviously good for carving. If you're gonna use it for multiple purposes, you'll need to make sure you're happy with keeping it sharp because you don't wanna blunt it too much on your firewood, and then it's not in good shape for your carving. But certainly, if you only wanted one ax, um, and you wanted something small for carving a lot, 
that would definitely be a good consideration. This would go inside your bag, wouldn't be on the outside of your pack. Um, but it comes with a nice leather sheath. I think you have to buy this extra, but it is a well-constructed solid sheath. Um, do a little bit of honing on the blade, but all in all, a pretty decent option if that's you know, the side of a sort of a task you're interested in doing. So on the other end of the scale, if you're going to be doing much more wood processing, a bit more felling, then this sort of size, which is the large forest axe or this Husqvarna forest axe, this was actually, I think, 40 pounds you can get them for. They are made by the Swedish um, blacksmiths, one of the Swedish companies for Husqvarna. So they quite equivalent in terms of quality to the small forest axe, but a third of the price, which is pretty good going. Um, so I think the Husqvarna axes in, in general are a really good bargain. They come with an axe cover. Um, probably will, as over time, want to thin out the handle to your preference, but in a way it's good they come slightly thicker. You can do the shaping yourself, but you could use it as it is. Um, just a bit of honing on the blade and um, it's, a, it's a really good option. So I think if you're going for the um, more wood processing, this is the sort of size you want to think about. The longer handle does mean that it sticks out below um, a 35 litre rucksack, um, but a larger rucksack would be fine, or inside the rucksack would be another option. But um, I think depending on your tasks, these are the two ends of the sort of bushcrafting range I would say you want to look at. So the last one really was the Rinaldi, and I have featured this in another video, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, bit of a hybrid really, um, it's not designed for the recreational market, more for um, the agricultural side, but it actually functions very well. As I mentioned in that video, the other video, the handle, if it breaks, it's very easy to replace because it's a slip fit from the top. The weight to blade ratio is very good for um, felling or limbing. It does make it a bit more awkward for carving. Um, and the handle is longer so it does fit below the rucksack but you could arguably detach it put the head inside the rucksack and strap this to the side um, if you wanted to you would need to make your own cover it doesn't come with a cover but it's very cheap um, in fact i think this was between 30 and 40 pound on ebay so very good cheap option that you could think about if that was the sort of size you were um, interested in getting So I think um, in summary, um, the small forest axe shouldn't be discounted. Um, it's really, if you're into portability and variety, it's always going to be an option. If you're just into carving and a small amount of firewood processing, think more along the lines of a carving hatchet. And if you're going to be doing a lot more camp-based work where you can walk to your camp and do a fair bit of processing of wood, um, something like the forest axes is always a good option. All of these axes we looked at today pretty much are made in in Europe and to a larger or smaller degree are what they call hand forged. I think the really cheap ones aren't, they're going to just be purely drop forged in closed die um, drop forges. I think this type is in an open die so there's partially automated and partially blacksmith driven. So they're not fully handmade. I think the Ukrainian axe is handmade and the Basque axe is definitely handmade. So if you want to support smaller blacksmiths or like the idea of a handmade item, then you know any of these really would suffice, but this one was definitely handmade, fully handmade, and so is this. The Swedish axes are Partially, or they they claim fully handmade, and okay, there's a person processing it throughout the, the um, manufacturing um, cycle, um, but they're not as fully man -ma oh, handmade as some of the others. But still, you know, they're made in Europe by people who are doing that task day in day out. And then the bottom of the price range, still made in Europe, but um, drop forged and 
you know made to a standard but the quality is not bad um so we're, we're thinking about something else that you could consider if you are prepared to have two axes is have something like that which you would use for processing lots of wood and then your hatchet for all the small tasks so that would make a good combination for bushcraft if you if you are going to um, think about having if you can consider having more than one axe um, that's pretty cheap in fact those two together are probably the same price as that one so you know that's giving you a good good range of tasks um, for a similar price and that would be a really good recommended option so I think in summary um, all of these are going to be good uh, I really like the Basque axe I think it's it's really nice they have a full range up to much bigger um, axes they use for their timber sports really interesting one it's not as available um, so this one's a bit of an interesting hybrid it's cheap um, the axe head is very nice got the German style um, flared bits work very well I don't like the handle it's very very thick um, probably want to take all the varnish off thin it down and you know maybe either a shorter or a longer that that for me that it's it's a difficult size I know people complain about the size of this handle I think this is even worse but um, decent head nice steel and uh, you know will pretty much do everything you need so hopefully some of that information will pr prove useful to some of you um, and if you have any comments put them below and I'll, I'll answer them as best as I can so thank you for watching and I hope that was useful thank you